Hey guys, this is Shannon, and today I wanted to talk to you about my chicken coops. Uh, we have five different kinds of coops, and I was just feeding up this morning. Excuse my very noisy rooster. Um, I was just feeding up this morning, and we have three or four of the five coops in use. So I just thought I would kind of show you pros and cons of the different kinds of coops. So I'll start with this one down here. This one was given to us and eventually we are going to tear it all apart, reuse um, portions of it, like the fencing, some of the wood, the screws, um, hardware, but make it a bit more user friendly. Um, in Florida, tons of ventilation, which is a good thing. Um, the whole thing is covered in hardware cloth, but it is a short coop you have to lean down to clean it to do absolutely anything in it. Um, and the chickens can't get very high in roost. So let me open up and let these guys out. All right, guys, go. I have all their feed set up out there for them. Um, I ferment their feed. So I have these little trays and everything just randomly placed around so they can go get some food. So on the inside of this, right now, we just have buckets um, of water that I have to change out every couple of days um, and scrub them out. But eventually we are gonna put in a full water system over here, but we never intended to have this many chickens and this many coops. So um, it's only become a problem recently in the last couple of years. So I have things hanging. Um, when we go out of town, I'll hang three or four different containers of water and feed in here. Normally, I don't fill this up unless we're out of town. Um, the feed is just for someone else to take care of the chickens in an easy way for us. Um, like I said, I usually ferment, but I don't want anyone to have to deal with that. Um, so I don't use that very often. Um, so this is the way it is you have to squat down to get inside. Chris just quickly made a couple of roosts to get them off the ground. Um, cleaning it out is a bit of a pain. You have to hunch over the whole time. Over here in the corner is where I have nest boxes and I have that whole corner tarped so rain does not get in and I just have a laundry basket and a crate with a big flat paver heavy in the bottom and hay on top so they won't tip it over. And that is pretty much the extent of this coop. Um, I have it sitting on cattle panels like this so that um, something can't dig underneath. And you can see they extend under, under the edge and any place there might be a gap like next to the water where the water keeps uh, washing out between the two cattle panels. I usually just have a big pile of bricks there. So nothing is going to dig in. Um, the downside to this coop, not only it being short, it also has a big gap along the top that needs to be filled. Um, I have to winterize it, so that means I have to tarp it or I have to take pieces of plywood and screw it to the side to keep the wind out and the rain out. Uh, we just went through a hurricane, which is why I'm missing my tarp on my other pen over here. I'll show you in a minute. Um, and so when that happens, not only do I tarp it, but then we come around it with a ratchet strap the entire way uh, to make sure the tarp stays on and they stay out of the wind and rain. But for the summer and them having plenty of space to run around until I come out in the morning and let them out, it's a good option. But if you're short, it's great. If you're tall, <laughs> it's awful and I'm kind of tall. So it's a bit of a pain. Um, let me let these girls out so that they can eat before I head on to coop number two. All right. Okay. So coop number two is our truck topper over here. Chris and I made this, I don't know, maybe less than a year ago. Um, I just wanted to repurpose it and um, it seemed like a good option. So right now I have two broody hens in it. 
You can probably maybe see them running around in there. Very unhappy. But they've been broody for weeks and weeks and weeks. And I keep trying to break the broody. I'll put them in here, you know, three, four days at a time. This time I'm going to leave them in here a week and see what happens. See, I have extra waters on top. I like to fill up a bunch of extra waters because the downside to a truck topper coop is I have to get down on my hands and knees um, to put the food and water inside. So that can be a bit of a pain. Plus side is I have, again, it sitting on a paddle panel like this. So nothing can dig underneath and get inside it. And if I want to move it, I just hook the tractor a chain to the tractor and I pick it up and I slide it. I can slide it by myself without the tractor, but it is pretty darn heavy. Um, one of the pros of this is there is tons of ventilation. There's windows on each side. I keep the windows open. There's a big one on the back. This whole back is, um, is open so that they have plenty of ventilation. Um, during a hurricane, I can just slide them shut if need be. Um, it's very low to the ground. This thing does not move. It has been through actually quite a few hurricanes, never once moved. Um, so it's no problem. It's simple, easy solution to create a chicken pen and truck toppers are a dime a dozen. I mean, you can find ones that have been painted, things, ones that have come off wrecked vehicles and, um, the glass door, I have to scoot it just past the edge of the hog wire so that the door opens and closes and to combat that issue one it's heavy to open the door so something is not going to be able to easily pull that door open but just to be on the safe side i always line up a couple of blocks or pavers along the front just as extra precaution and then i change the food and water at night when these guys are sleeping and not going to make a run for it um whenever i have to open it and get down and and feed them um, if you were having like a mom and chicks in here or a sick chicken would be great. Or if you wanted to move it across a pasture for grass, again, this makes a great chicken tractor. So, but I'm not using that for that purpose. I use it for sick chickens and for broody hens that just won't stay off a nest. Um, this is our third pen. Um, this one needs some serious TLC right now. Chris made this for me, I don't know, maybe five years ago. I can't remember exactly. I'll post the video of both of these, of him making these for me. Um, this one is the one I use for new chickens that I get, um, chicks I hatched, um, moms and babies. It, it's great for that. Um, the whole thing is hardware clothed, including the bottom, so nothing can dig up. There are loops on the ends, so I can drag it with a tractor to fresh grass or a new location. Each side opens independently. So this side opens, that side opens, and the back opens. The back is 100% waterproof, which Chris is to fix my little gap there. Um, it cracked. And this is like that heavy duty plastic, so it'll never rot. Um, he'll just have to seal that gap and um and it'll be fine um there are hooks hanging let's see if you can see there's hooks hanging along the front and i put the waters out here and i have another hook in the back so that feed goes back there and it stays dry and i'll open the back and see how many spiders come rushing out at me because i've not used this in a while so um again there's a hook there you can see you can see that there is hardware cloth on the bottom and again another loop back here with a chain so that it can be drug and yes lots of spiders this would have to be despidered <laughs> before we could use it for babies again i'd have to get in here with the pressure washer and lift it up with a tractor and clean the whole thing out but it is not going to be used for babies anytime soon because as you can see, I have more than enough chickens. So that's why I'm trying to get these two guys off the nest because I don't need any more chickens. <laughs> so um, this coop has worked so well. I can't even begin to tell you how many chickens I have raised in this pen. Um, just this last year, I know I've raised 
probably 45. So it's great. Never had an issue with it. Worked like a charm. Um, it's gone through hurricanes. <laughs> it's low to the ground. This one though is easier. You have to lean over to clean it out. Um, but I have long handled rakes and I just can rake everything up and then use a giant dustpan to kind of scoop it out or a flat shovel to put it into a bucket and go put over in my garden beds, which are a mess and overgrown right now. So um, that is pen number three. Like I said, this one's great, but the cons is it's very heavy. You do need a, a tractor, a golf cart, a four wheeler, or a couple people to move it around. It does make an okay chicken tractor. Um, Chris has it on plastic skids so that the bottom's not gonna rot. It's just these top thin pieces that have rotted. None of the other wood, I know it looks rough. If I pressure washed it, it would look great, but it's out here under the oak trees in the shade. So everything gets dirty. So, um, but all of the plastic is made out of like this signboard stuff. Um, Chris had this, these left over from one of his old shops before he changed location. So we're just reusing the signboard for all kinds of stuff around here that we can cut the signs apart and use because they don't rot. They just last forever. But this has been an awesome coop for raising babies because there's so many different doors. Um, if it's been really, really cold and I've been a little bit concerned and it's been cold and windy, um, I just had a piece of plywood that I set in there to block off the back section and just put a brick in there to hold it up to be a windbreak and mom and babies were snug as a bug in there, no issues. So we'll go on to my fourth coop, which I would say this one's my favorite coop. Um, Chris made me this one eight, nine years ago, something like that. Um, it's a mess under here. We just had a hurricane and we're doing hurricane cleanup and all that. But this one has a run attached. And the only part that I don't love on this coop is the run. Because again, I'm, I'm not super tall, but I'm taller. And I have to lean over to rake the run out, which is a major pain in the butt. Constantly catching my hair in the wire um, above it. And I get out with a crick in my neck and in my back from uh, trying to clean it out. Um, this did have a whole cover over it. And you can see little bits and pieces hanging <laughs> from the hurricane that ripped it down. Um, it, we needed a new one anyway, but, and we're going to extend, but this normally is under complete and total shade with a like tunnel cover over the whole thing, which gives me dry storage up here and under here, like I keep hay and my fermented feed and stuff under here. So I'll take you around to the actual coop part and show you what that looks like. Again, we just have buckets of water here and a feeder hanging, but they are eating their fermented feed and they're eating their watermelon. And we only use those hangers um, unless they are in a, in a coop like this or we are out of town. All right, please excuse my mess of orange plastic up here. It's just a temporary thing until I can get my black mesh back up there that you won't see and the new tarp and it will look decent-ish again. <laughs> um, Chris built this for me. It needs a bath so bad, but like I said, I just decided to suddenly do this because I thought, you know, how many people have multiple different coops at their house? Um, this is nine years old, I wanna say, something like that. Um, it's up on stilts. The stilts are on blocks, so the stilts, the wood won't rot. And then we have just um, like this mesh fencing around it, the lattice work to in theory keep the chickens out, but I still need to come and block it off because they dig out and go under there and lay eggs whenever they get out. Um, it has three locks down the back because Florida, lots of humidity and it will, the wood bows. And if you just put one lock in the middle, it'll end up bowing and you will not be able to easily get it closed. And this one, I keep wood shavings um, on the floor. Again, it's that hard plastic floor. This is removable right here. And I just scoot the bucket of the tractor or if I wanted to use a wheelbarrow 
or a cardboard box, whatever, just up to the opening right here. And I just rake all the shavings and nesting material out into the buckets. Super simple. Um, one of my floors had actually given up the ghost and broken and Chris has to come out and fix it. So that one is blocked off at the moment. Um, pretty sure it's because I shot a rattlesnake in, <laughs> in uh, that one and blew a hole in the floor, but that's beside the point. Um, there are three current nest boxes in here and the roosts are all up top. Everything has extra hardware cloth. I don't know if you can see that in the peak. And the vents up here are hardware cloth. Every little opening has hardware cloth um, to make sure that no creatures get in here. I don't have to lean over whenever I clean this up. I can do it standing. Um, it's easy for me to just bring a bag of wood shavings and throw them in here. And then I put a base layer of wood shavings with some hay on top. Um, I have a guillotine door on the front so I can raise it and lower it if need be. If it's very cold in the winter, I can um, lower the guillotine door so wind doesn't blow in and yet they still have plenty of ventilation up top. Um, it's easy to open the nest boxes on the side. Chris has me a hook right here. I just lift up and hook it and I can access my nest boxes without having to squat down and waddle myself inside to try and get them out of there. So, and then normally, like I said, this is all undercover, so I have lots of dry storage. Um, eventually, we might do another one like this, but we're definitely gonna take that one apart and repurpose all the materials out of it. I was trying to think, um, I didn't say any cons about this coop. Um, honestly, the only con is right here at the edge. Um, Chris has to go and put me some sort of, I don't know, filler or some rubber stripping or something because water does leak through there. He's actually going to extend the roof line just a touch so that um, water does not, does not drip here and then he'll put some rubber stripping or something there for me. But this has been by far my absolute favorite coop. Um, it's still going strong. I, I don't have to lean over. The only thing I would change out here is we're talking about taking off the plastic roof material and putting it up into a peak and taking the wire and um, doing the same thing. So giving it either a solid roof or a wire roof up into a peak. Um, so that I can at least walk down the center of that and rake it out and put fresh bedding and stuff because that's the only drawback to this coop is I can't stand up to clean out the run. And that's our own fault. It's not the actual coop design. It's the run design. But everything else on this coop is wonderful. And you can see these metal posts right here. When we have a bad hurricane, we just run a ratchet strap over this coop because it can allow air to get underneath it and lift it up. Um, we've never had that issue, but just in case we do ratchet strap all of our coops down um, if there's a hurricane coming. I guess technically we have six coops. <laughs> uh, we do not use this area unless it's an emergency. Um, honestly, we this is a dog pen that we used to have for some of our other dogs or when they were being trained. And we have dog glues in here. You can see they are a mess because they have not been in use in a long time, probably three years or so. Um, so they're full of leaves. The chickens do come in here on a very regular basis. And you can see there's divots everywhere where they come in and dig because this is just like a gorgeous place. We have this huge magnolia tree out here and it's all shaded and lots and lots of worms. But um, I had sections of metal um, fencing that I that's why you see bricks still there because I've been too lazy to lug all the bricks back to the brick pile um, that there are bricks here and I just put the metal fencing up to the front of the dog loos and stacked bricks in front of them um, I had someone that was getting rid of chickens did not know I was going to be getting chickens until 
like they were on the way with like a dozen chickens and I needed some place to put them the very first time I used these. And I said, just throw them in the dog pen, I'll be there. So um, this became a chicken home for months and they were young and they would just go in there and huddle together. They stayed 100% dry and I would just put the mesh in front and stack the bricks up each night once they were in there. Um, had the dogs water, I'm refilling in here. They jumped up there and got water. Um, when they were babies, I would put small waterers. You see random bricks laying around everywhere um, in, the, in the roots of the trees. That's where I would put feeders and waterers. Um, and yeah, this, this worked great. It worked for months until I could um, get them incorporated into the outside flock with all the big girls and they'd grown up a little bit. But I've also used dog kennels, large dog kennels with the mesh front. Those worked great too because it was tiny mesh and nothing could reach in and, and reach through the mesh and get them. No little raccoon hands um, could fit through and the vents on the side were too small for raccoon hands. So yep, I've used giant dog kennels too in here when I had way, way too many chickens and um, I needed to find them homes. So this is, I guess, technically chicken pen number five. Works like a charm. Pain in the butt to get down and put the mesh fence over it each night. And I just used a long handle rake to rake this one out. That one, I would rake it up and then use a dust pan to scoop it out. And then I put fresh wood shavings um, in there also, but they had this huge area to roam and were safe. Just a note about these, if you ever have to use dog loos like this as um, temporary homes for anything and you need to put a fence on the front of it, instead of doing bricks, get either some rebar or some T-post and drive them in on either side of the opening and slip the panel in there and then just put one brick or two um, on the other side of it. It will make your life so much easier um, and you won't have to sit there and create like a wall of bricks up the front to make sure that the panels stay on. Um, just, just an FYI, you, you can do that. Okay, and this is coop number five. This is actually at my mom's house and she recently got chickens within the last year. Um, I'll go around and show you what the actual coop looks like, but her run, she just got one of these ready-made um, metal framed runs and put a tarp over it and it just has chicken wire. Um, really, especially here in Florida, you need more than chicken wire uh, to keep your chickens safe because a possum can absolutely just chew right through that. Um, a bobcat, anything that's super motivated can go right through uh, the chicken wire. So um, she has actually the kind of water system or similar to it that we're gonna be installing at our place with a little cups, um, but where she has a big gallon of water going to hers, we're gonna have just a water supply going to it. Um, and then she has her feeders there in the middle. But that's just the run, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the coop. So this shed actually used to be our garbage collection area. Um, it was just some place to put the garbage cans in so that they weren't unsightly and raccoons couldn't get into them. There was no top to it. Um, it was just um, enclosed and it had a door on it. So they put a nice roof on it, which is great. And then they built this little um, jut out right here for the boxes, uh, for the nest boxes. And you just can open and access the nest boxes. And then there's two latches that you just put um, carabiners and to keep them locked. Okay. The inside, which she's got a couple locks on the outside of this to keep it secure and all the major open areas have the hardware cloth on them. Um, they come in here at night and she closes the door so that nothing can get in to get to them. And she just has hay on the floor. This is just a dirt floor. Um, they believe put, put um, yes, he put wire stapled all along the bottom so if something tries to dig under 
Um, the floor is a wire floor underneath the dirt and hay. And then they have their nest boxes and roosting bar up here. It's super airy, super light, um, perfect for the number of chickens she has. She could actually have a few more chickens, but she's very happy. Um, with just four, a friend of hers gave her these these four girls and, and she's super happy with them. So you can see, yeah, there's cracks through, but that's ventilation. If it were to get really, really cold, um, we could either chink them or we could just honestly tarp the whole thing. But chickens can handle the cold pretty well. It's the heat they have more trouble with. So um, I absolutely love this coop. I like the design. I like that you could just bring, um, a, a wheelbarrow up to the edge of this and you can just rake it out and put it in the wheelbarrow and change it out and that it is such light and airy and you can stand up <laughs> when you're inside it so um, ultimately we may end up building one similar to this at our house or just buying a shed and putting it there for the next coop and not putting all the effort um, into actually building something because I do like to be able to stand up Okay guys, that is five, six if you count the uh, dog loos um, for coops to look at different ones that we have. Um, my stilt coop and my mom's coop are probably my two favorite designs, at least for me personally, just because of how we raise our chickens. They have tons of free range area to go to, um, tons and tons of space. So that's not an issue for us. We don't need a huge enclosed area for them. I do like a run attached to my um, smaller coops so that they can get out and about and get out of the coop and out of the heat. It's really hot here in Florida. So um, I like them to be able to get out into an open area before I turn them loose out into the main part of the coop. So this is what works for me. It's just a real life look at what all the different coops are like and how you can use them and just give you an idea of what will work best for you. And eventually we'll have one more coop <laughs> that works good for us um, and hopefully make the changes that need to be made out in our pen just to make life a little easier but you don't need anything special to have a coop and to start having chickens. You can absolutely start with something small like what I've shown you and move from there to make something that you really want that works for you. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any thoughts or comments, please leave them down below. Have a great afternoon.